So anytime we eat a hamburger, we are directly worsening global warming, creating water shortages, increasing desertification, and expediting species extinction, destruction of biodiversity, and basically killing the planet. World hunger is exacerbated by meat and dairy consumption. Worldwide, one in seven people suffer from chronic hunger, the vast majority living in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. A child starves to death every two seconds, 24,000 a day, 8.8 .8 million a year. Three-fourths of them are children less than five years of age. Half of the world's harvest is fed to animals, while 800 million people go hungry. The more grain is fed to livestock, the less is left to feed people. As far as the health effects of meat and dairy-based diets are concerned, the same diseases brought about by animal-based diets that are wreaking havoc in, our, in the United States, and especially, especially the Afro-American community, like hypertension, diabetes, obesity, cancer, are the same diseases that are growing in leaps and bounds in Africa as we speak because of the introduction of the Western diet and fast food outlets. The traditional diet that has been rapidly, or has, that has been around for centuries in Africa, plant-based diet is rapidly being replaced by a Western diet. And hence the increase in the chronic, chronic and debilitating diseases we see. Now before I go to my last topic, I'd like to share with you interviews I did with Ghanaian vegetarians. The first person I interviewed is a remarkable 13-year-old Ghanaian by the name of Mordecai Nemechek, named climate change icon by the BBC World Service Trust, did a six-week internship program at UNTA, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development in Geneva, and won the honorable mention award on global warming at the United Nations. I also interviewed his father and the, and the founder of the Ghanaian Vegetarian Society. Please take a listen. I've heard from sources that there's fumes from cars and others, but there's this new evidence that the food we eat is a main contributor of climate change problems. And if we are able to cut down on meat we eat and even go vegetarian, then we have a better chance of fighting climate change. Since 13, only 13% 13 of CO2 emissions are released from cars, in terms of fumes, then carbon sequestration will be useless and we'll be spending much more money on carbon sequestration. But if that money could be used to make to, to, to make the earth vegetarian, then we have a better chance of fighting climate change. Then we have a better chance of winning the war to wage of climate change. produced by animals comes from birds and farts, which is quite interesting. <laughs> that is what I have in the presentation. And we'll face more of a life-threatening risk of climate change if we all don't change to a vegan diet. Mahatma Gandhi said, Earth has enough to satisfy one's need, but not one's greed. And I think it was so clear, because if you're a vegetarian, you have more to share than a meat eater. As you said in the presentation, if you have a cow, one, one cow, one person. But if you have, say, soy beans, you can share with about 22 people. And it's sort of more kindness to man and kindness to animals and kindness to God's creatures. I used to work with the Ministry of Education um, after Retiring in 1999, I set up my own school called Cradle Grace Montessori School. I come from a very poor family and from a remote area in, in Ghana, in the central region. My dad was a cook to an Indian, and um, the Indian saw something in me. Actually, through him, I'm what I am. The Indian saw me through secondary school to the university. And he took me through the process of becoming a vegan. And he took me through a process and I, I really loved it. And I've been a vegan for 35 years. I'm telling you, living a vegan life is the cheapest way of living in Ghana. Wow. 
You see, our obsession for 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 animals is 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 beyond measure. But if we could if we could delink ourselves from that angle and look up to the the, the vegetables, the fruits and vegetables which are abundant. abundant, they are here. That's yeah. true. And the unfortunate thing is that most people will say, "Oh, uh, I'm not rich. I can't be a vegan. I'm not rich. I can't be a vegan." But the food vegans eat are the cheapest you can get. The nature of my background: every weekend, that's Saturday, people will kill animals. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sacrifices, right, left, and centre. And it's it's always a, a big deal for everybody. Mm -hmm. Every weekend. It's a big thing for everybody. But at a point in time, when I saw what was good for me, I could make a decision for myself. So I always tell Brother Natana, we have a lot to do. The people, the poor people out there would, 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 would go to the market and buy cow feet. <laughs> it's expensive. It's so cheap. Cabbage is so cheap. Carrots, broccoli, whatever, is so cheap. And you can grow it. They are sometimes even grow in the wild. Right. Very, very cheap. They, I mean, it's so organic, beautiful. Mm -hmm. How many people will take it? Right. right. I think we have to do a lot. Tell people the benefits. Right. Being a vegan um, makes you a complete human being. It makes you a complete Vegetarianism, you know, uh, program is that is to create awareness. Because, like we said, five billion years ago, Africans were vegetarians. One to three years ago, we walked up from Africa, and this has become a problem of the African country today. Because when we're talking about emancipation. If you emancipate your mind from everything and you don't emancipate your mind from the diet, it's a problem. Because one of the key that we are being destroyed is the diet. It changes from our diet into a different way and see where we are there. Because you are what you eat. It prevents you from disease. And that was the divine law Yah gave it to us from the beginning. We eat from the soil, we are created from the soil, we are created from the dust, so we have to eat because the minerals and the vitamins, you get it out from all this. So the idea behind all this is not any form of religion, but we are going back to the beginning when everything was good. Because when we say everything was good, why today all this problem? We have research, we have scientists, we have doctors, you know, development, consciousness, high technology, but because the consciousness is low, negative, we keep on repeating the same mistake. Why? Because we are not conscious. The idea of setting up vegetarian restaurants and even a library here is that is to create awareness because information is power. Last but not least, I'd like to share my experience at the Elmina Castle. The Elmina Castle, located in Elmina, on the coast of Ghana, was built by the Portuguese in 1482. It's got some sound. As a trading post, seized by the Dutch in 1637, became an important stop in the route of the Atlantic slave trade, which continued till 1814. The castle was taken over by the British in, 19, in 1871. My experience at the castle was very powerful and sobering. We walked through the castle with apprehension and a heavy heart. Our guide showed us the rape room where female slaves were brought in after being picked up by the commander from outside his quarters that overlooked the courtyard. Three to four young women, female slaves, would be brought to the courtyard after being washed, and the commander from above would pick the one he wants, and then the unfortunate being is taken to a room to be raped. We then visited the infamous door of no return, from which slaves would exit to go on the ships. 